Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an awesome geometry problem that I don't think appears in any type of math literature. I haven't seen it in any books or websites, but there is a similar problem with identical circles. Uh, anyway, so at this point, if you want to pause the video, uh, you can try the problem yourself first. Uh, it says a square with side length x is inscribed in the region between the two circles that are tangent and a line that's tangent to both circles as shown below. The radius of the larger circle is 3 units and the radius of the smaller circle is 2 units and we're supposed to find x. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the solution here. So first, uh, since the circles are tangent, I will be doing... Uh, a connection here between the centers so let's go ahead and connect the centers here which is an important thing to do and then draw perpendiculars perpendiculars from here and from here so those are 90 degrees because we know that the radius is perpendicular to the tangent at the point of tangency and then uh, we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem so this is 3 this is 2 let's go ahead and replace those lengths and I'll be making more connections uh, square is x by x so let's go ahead and replace those. And then I'll be drawing a parallel segment here. Okay. And then I'm going to basically use that length. Since this is 2 and the larger circle has a radius of 3, the difference should be 1. I can go ahead and find that length from there. And um, I will be making more connections. So let's go ahead and connect the center to A and this center to the D. And then we'll make two right triangles here which we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem for, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and designate some lengths here. So this should be x. Let's call this length a, and let's call this one b. Therefore, this is also a, and this is also b, okay? What else do we know? We know that um, this is 1, so this is 2, this whole thing here. Therefore, this is also going to be 2. If you subtract the x, so this will be 2 minus x, okay? So that I know, and then this one should be, because this length is x, this should be 2 minus x as well. We know that this is the radius, so that's going to be a 2, and this is going to be a 3. Okay? So I'm ready to use the Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to use it more than once. Okay? Let's go ahead and write down our equation here. So if you look at this triangle here, you're going to notice that we have... 1 plus 2 minus x as one of the legs, so that's going to be 3 minus x. That squared plus a squared is going to give us 3 squared, which is 9. And I'm, my goal is going to be to isolate a here, but let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. 9 minus 6x plus x squared plus a squared is 9. 9 cancels out. And if I go ahead and isolate a here, a squared is going to be 6x minus x squared, therefore a should be the square root of 6x minus x squared. Okay? All right. So this is our first equation. And then let's go ahead and use it for the smaller circle. So we're basically going to be getting from here the 2 minus x squared plus b squared. In this triangle, I'm using the Pythagorean theorem, basically, is equal to 2 squared, which is equal to 4. From here, I get 4 minus 4x, if I expand this, plus x squared plus b squared equals 4. 4 cancels out. If I isolate b squared here, I get 4x minus x squared. And from here, I get b equals square root of 4x minus x squared. Okay? So A and B are kind of similar except with different numbers, uh, but those are the lengths that I'm going to be using. Now, I do need to use, since I need to solve for X, I need to involve X in this equation somehow. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem in this tall triangle. Okay, we know the hypotenuse is 3 plus 2, which is 5, and one of the legs is 1. So... If you consider the Pythagorean theorem again one more time, then you're going to be getting 5 squared minus 1 squared and the square root of that, which is going to equal 2 root 6. So basically, this segment here, this segment here, 
is of length to root 6, which is the, the length for this segment as well. Now, this is good because now I can write that in terms of a, b, and x, and then I can use that to solve for x, okay? So let's go ahead and write that down. I know that a plus x plus b, which is the length of the segment here, is equal to this length, as we marked here, the, the one of the legs in this right triangle, and that is equal to 2 root 6, okay, from here. Okay, now, how do I use that? Well, I do know that, uh, I do know A in terms of X, so let's go ahead and replace that. This gives me the square root of 6X minus X squared plus X plus B. B was also written in terms of X right here, and A is right here. So I can just go ahead and plug that in there for X minus X squared. And that sum is equal to 2 root 6. Okay, so... Basically, by solving this equation, we're going to be able to find the value of x, okay? So, what are the steps in solving this equation? This is a radical equation, and obviously the result is not going to be quadratic, but one of the things we can do is actually leave the radicals on the left-hand side. There's, of course, other ways to do it too, but I'll pursue this method. So, leave the radicals on the left-hand side, and... Go ahead and subtract x from both sides, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and square both sides, okay? And that should give me, that should give me, hopefully, a nicer uh, equation because uh, at least I'm going to get rid of some of the radicals here. So by squaring the first term, I'll be getting 6x minus x squared. Then uh, in the middle, as you know, a plus b quantity squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That formula is in effect, so the second term is going to be 2 times the product of the first and the second term. Plus, I need to square the second term, which is 4x minus x squared. Okay? So, now what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, square the right-hand side. And when I square the right-hand side... With the formula, 2 root 6 squared is 24 minus 2ab is going to give me 4 root, 4 root 6x plus x squared. Okay? Now, I need to isolate the radicals again. So what I need to do is go ahead and put everything here that's not a radical on the right-hand side and then leave the radicals alone. So let's see. We have a negative x squared and a negative x squared, which is going to make negative 2x squared. If I add that to x squared, I'll be getting... 3x squared, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and add these 6x and 4x, which gives me 10x, and I'm going to go ahead and subtract it from here, and that should give me negative 10x. So if I go ahead and combine like terms there, it's going to look like this, right? And then that's pretty much it, right? I got all the uh, variables uh, except for the number. So I do have a number here, 24. There is no constant on the left-hand side, so I'm just going to add that to the equation. And what I have left on the other side of the equation is going to be just the product of these two radicals. Okay? I need one more step to get rid of all the radicals, so I need to square both sides. One more time, let's go ahead and do that. If you square both sides, then it's going to be a really, really long expression. And I'll save you some of the trouble here, but let me go ahead and show you how this works. Uh, basically, by doing this, by doing this, you're getting 3x squared minus 4 root 6 plus 10 x plus 24 quantity squared is equal to 4 times 6x minus x squared multiplied by 4x minus x squared. Okay. So that's going to be a quartic equation, as you can see from the fourth powers. And I'll be getting more fourth powers, and I'll put everything on the same side. But to save you all this trouble, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and skip some of the steps here and give you guys the resulting equation from here. I'll be getting at the end, after some manipulations, 5x to the fourth minus the quantity 20 plus 24 root 6 times x to the third power plus the quantity 
244 plus 80 root 6 times the quantity x squared minus 480 plus 192 root 6 x plus 576 is equal to 0. Wow, that is some equation, isn't it? Okay, so this is a quartic equation, and as you know, they can be solved in general form. So we have a solution for quartic equations, but obviously you'll, you'll acknowledge that this is very complicated, especially with an equation like this with where the coefficients are, you know, of irrational numbers, it's going to be even worse. So, but you can definitely use some technology here, which is uh, Wolfram Alpha, is, uh, can help you solve the problem. And actually, I did it for you guys, uh, and I'm going to give you the solution here. And that's going to be the answer. So we were trying to solve for x, which is the side length for the square here, right? We were trying to solve for x, which is the side length for this square. And at the end, the solution that we find is going to be the length we're looking for. So according to not my calculations, but Wolfram Alpha's calculations, x is going to be approximately 0 0.97228. And it makes sense because the, the answer is less than one. As you know, the circles have radii two and three, and you can kind of scale it, you know, in this picture uh, that the square makes sense with that, that type of length, obviously. Let me tell you something. Wolfram Alpha finds four, all four solutions to this equation, obviously, right? The other solution that is real was this one. Let me give you that one too. 3.3749. By the way, you can just confirm this with Wolfram Alpha as well. If you go to the website and type this up, uh, you can go ahead and get that. But what happens here is that this solution is greater than three and we can't have that because the square is inscribed. So there's no way this is gonna work. And the other two solutions of the quartic equation are complex numbers. Obviously, they're not what we're looking for either. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the solution. This is the first geometry problem in the challenging math problem series. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a good one. Bye-bye.